Hi friends, it's Shari and today I am making a really fun movie themed pull and pop card. So I am making a card with the theme of Mary Poppins and I'm going to be using the Very Rainy Day set with this cute bear with the umbrella. I did stamp out these little bears but I did not end up using them and I will explain why in the video. I have special delivery for the hat and the bag. I'm using some tiny pieces from the new elephant parade which is that crown of flowers and a little bow. There's also a little bow in So Very Mice but I'm using that little flower as well. And then I did stamp out these hats. That was for my little bears that I actually did not end up using and I'll use Harold's ABCs to create my sentiment. So I've already stamped out my images and then I'm taking a Copic multi-liner. So this is a Copic friendly pen. You could use any pen that doesn't smudge with a Copic pen. And I'm adding some details to my little bear to make it look a little more like Mary Poppins. So I pulled up some images on the internet. This is kind of a mashup of the old Mary Poppins, the new Mary Poppins, and images from the Mary Poppins Broadway musical. <laughs> so I'm giving the bear's jacket a little collar there that you can see. And I will add some more details when I get some coloring done. And I'm starting out with some red for a red jacket. Now the classic Mary Poppins, she has a black coat and a black umbrella, but I did want some pops of color on this card because I knew that my background was going to be a lot of dark colors. So I want Mary Poppins Bear to stand out. So I'm going with red for the coat, which is what you see in the images when you pull up images from the Broadway musical which I have never seen and I would really like to see actually. So I'm coloring in, but leaving that open part in the middle, that is going to be the shirt. And then I'm pulling out that multi-liner again and adding some details. So some little stripes on the cuff. I'm gonna color in those buttons with this. It doesn't have to be colored in with a black marker. And then I'm adding some little buttons to the top of the pockets, which was a cute little detail that was on her jacket when I looked at the photographs. I am coloring this bow red, but you're going to see that I'm gonna stamp another one and color it blue because I thought that that would be nice and not so much more red. I'm doing black boots because she had some black shoes on. And I know the coat is longer. I'm gonna consider this her tights. So I'm just gonna do a dark gray there. Now for the shirt that you see when the collar is laid open, the picture I was looking at, she had a blue shirt on. So I'm just going in with a light blue for the shirt. And she also had white gloves on. So I'm just adding a very pale, E color to those white paws. Now of course classic umbrella is black and I like to use dark grays when I color black. You are going to see that I'm going to color the part that I'm coloring right now with a black marker here in a minute because once I got the gray on the top part of my umbrella I just wanted that inside part where it's shadowy and dark to be even darker. So I'm using some neutral grays I started out with that N4, and then I'm pulling that N6 up from the bottom, and I will blend it out. And this does give you the look of a black umbrella without losing the detail of the lines of the umbrella. And you can see now that it matches the inside a little bit too much, so I'm actually getting out the black and coloring that inside part black. So we have a little more contrast. Now for my bear, I'm using this E31 for the muzzle. You are going to see me color those other bears a little bit too, but like I said, I did not end up using them. And then for the main part of the face of the bear, I'm using my E70 colors. So I have an E77 for the dark, and then I'll blend it out with the light. Again, this is a really nice dark color, but you don't lose the detail of the eyes. And then I'm just going to use a really pale, cool gray for the shaft of that umbrella, and then I will color the handle black. So 
so there is my main Mary Poppins bear. But I'm going to use these little flowers, which is from the Elephant Parade set, and that little single flower from So Very Mice. That is going to decorate her hat and give us that classic Mary Poppins look. It will also cover up the band and the heart that's on this hat from Special Delivery. So all I really need to do is make a black hat with a black band. So I'm just going in with those same neutral grays that I used for the umbrella and coloring the hat. And I will give it a black band and I just colored right across that little piece in the middle with the heart because that is going to get covered up with my flowers. Now I didn't like what I did with the bag. I kind of drew some details, but I decided to change it up. So I'm stamping it again. I'm masking off the strap of the bag with a piece of post-it note tape and only inking up the front part of the bag. So this just gives me a little bag. It looks like a little purse. Of course, Mary Poppins has that big carpet bag, but I don't really have a stamp like that. So this is going to be the stand-in for the bag that she carries. And then here is that second bow tie that I actually colored blue. That was from the Mary Poppins Returns images. I think she had a red coat and a blue bow tie and it looked really nice. And it added a little bit more color than just another red um, element since that jacket is a lot of red. And then for the bag, because I of course want some color, I'm coloring this with some Bee Gees. And then I'll just take my Copic multiliner and just close off that little part of the image that was left open where I had masked. And now it looks like a complete image. So here are all my images. I used the coordinating dies to cut them out. You can see that that bag has the strap, but I'll just trim that off when I get to assembling. Now to move on to making my night sky. And I'm going to be using three colors of Distress ink. This is Prize Ribbon, which is a blue. I have Villainous Potion, which is purple, and Wilted Violet, which is slightly lighter. This is just a piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock, and I'm just putting water all over the top of it. And then I'm starting out with that Prize Ribbon, and you're going to see me put lots of layers of color to make my night sky. I'm kind of putting the blue on the right side, and I'll put the purple on the left. This is Villainous Potion. And I'm just picking up that color and dropping it onto that wet paper. And then they will mix together in the middle. And then I'll use the Wilted Violet kind of towards the bottom. And I will do a couple layers of this. This is still kind of on the light side for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my Ranger heat tool and dry it. And then I'll add another layer of ink right on top of it. So this is great for drying without scorching your paper. And once that water is dry, the next layer will just add even more color to this background. So you can really tell when it's dry when that curve of the paper starts to flatten out. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Go back in and pick up that prize ribbon ink. Kind of dab it around. I don't have all that water to move it around so I'm just going to completely cover it with the wet ink so that I don't end up with any lines in between. And that Villainous Potion I had up there was pretty watered down, so I just added some more ink by smushing it onto my craft mat, and you can see I'm getting some darker purples. And this image of the sky, it kind of came from that Broadway show poster that I found online. It had this lovely night sky with blues and purples and a silhouette of the city below. So again, I've gone all over with those colors. I'm going to pick it up so that dark color at the top kind of moves down as I dry it. 
And I like this kind of splotchy watercolor look much more than just applying the ink with a blending tool. I think this gives it a nice kind of sky look. And then I'm doing a third layer. I think I did three layers total. Picking up that color. It's looking really good now, nice and dark. I'm going to add lots of splatters all over this so you're not really going to tell too terribly much any imperfections. And I do make some mistakes in this and I will point them out and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes as I do. Now I am not going all the way to the bottom because I know I'm going to cover that up with some border die cuts at the bottom with my buildings and a fence. So that's why I'm not going all the way to the bottom of my piece of watercolor paper. Now once I have this dry, you are going to see mistake number one. I thought it was dry. It was not quite dry at that top corner because it was really wet there. And when I started trying to blend some oxide down, that as villainous potion oxide, I made the paper pill up a little bit. So I got out my heat tool, dried it a little bit more, and you can kind of see a rough spot up there, but it's going to be okay with all the texture that we add to this card. So that was just to darken up the top a little bit. Now to make my stars, I thought I would try some Distress Paint in Picket Fence and see if that gave me some white spots. So I added a little dot of that to my craft mat and I'm going to add some water to it, water it down, and basically use it like watercolor and add some splatters. So what I found in doing this was that I it was really white at first. But as it dried, it kind of faded away and wasn't as bright white as I wanted. So I will end up adding some white metallic watercolor flecks and splatters to this to create my starry sky. So you can see it looks pretty white right now. But as they start to dry, they started to fade a little bit. And I'm also using these flecks of paint to cover up that little boo-boo that was at the top. So here is that metallic white watercolor. And usually when I do splatters anyway, I do like to vary and put two different colors. I just think that adds more interest to a sky. So I'm grabbing my heat tool to dry that a little bit and make sure it looks the way I want it to. So to make a pull and pop card, we need a tab to pull. And I know that I need to make it match my background that I created. Otherwise, I'm going to have this bright white tab and it's going to look terrible. So I have cut a piece of watercolor paper. This is that same distressed watercolor paper. It's just an eight and a half by 11 piece. And I'm kind of looking at where my practice tab over here falls, I don't need to watercolor this whole piece. I only need to watercolor the top half that's coming out and going behind my bear. And as you can see, I need to watercolor both sides so that I don't see any white at all. So I'm just gonna draw a little pencil line and know that I only need to watercolor the top of this piece. And then everything else is going to be behind or get covered up by a little tab. And I'm just doing the exact same process that I did on the background. Since I'm putting my little bear kind of to the left side, I'm really just focusing on purple. That is blue on the right side and I about started painting the blue. Luckily it was really wet and I could just sop it all up and get rid of it because I'm kind of putting her on the purple side. I didn't really need any blue. So again, I'm doing the same thing as I did before, just adding layers of that purple. And I'm not worrying with the stars on this one because it's gonna be mostly hidden by the image. I did add a little bit of blue just to see what it looked like. That part's not even gonna get cut out actually. And I'm making sure it's really nice and dry and then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side so that my paper is the same on both sides. Now you could use some colored cardstock if you were doing this out of cardstock and make it match, but I wanted it to match perfectly with the exact same ink colors. So I'm flipping it over and I'm going to do the same 
on the back. Now I did try to say, hey, maybe I could um, ink blend with a foam tool. It did not look the same. So it's just a lot faster to do that exact same process. So once I have all these layers of that Villainous Potion on the top, dried on the front side and the back side, I can die cut my pull and pop tab. So again, this is that top half. And then I'm also going to cut that little stabilizer piece out of that same purple area because you're gonna see that as well. So I'll just take this to my die cut machine and cut that out. Now I'm going to use that piece of the die set that cuts the little slots for the tab to go through and I'm using my example on the right to figure out the placement. That was kind of my test one. And I'm using some removable tape. I am going to leave in mistake number two, which was that my tape pulled up part of my paper. So you can see right there <laughs> it was going to, so I went the other direction. But it's okay because my border that I put at the bottom is going to cover that up. So to create the Silhouette City at the bottom of my card, I have the Border Village die. This is cut from a piece of black cardstock that I cut to five and a half wide, so the same width as my background piece. And I'm going to decide how tall it needs to be. I'm lining this up so that that tallest point of this die cut, which is the building to the far left, has that little pointy piece on the roof. That's going to line up right at the bottom of that slot that was cut. And then I just flipped it over, used the edge of the cardstock to draw a line, and that's where I'm going to trim that. And I actually trimmed it slightly too long. Rather be too long than too short, so I'm just going to shave off a little bit more. And then this is going to fit along the bottom, and you can see that it is going to cover up my goof up a little bit there. And then I wanted to add a bit more at the bottom, so I've pulled out some storm cloud cardstock, and this is the spooky fence border die. And I'm doing the same thing here. I cut it from the top, and I have my piece much taller than I need for it to be. And I'm gonna figure out where I want this fence to be. And I think I decided that I didn't want the points of the fence to stick up into my buildings. And I was just using my bone folder kind of to figure out where the bottom was. So I will just trim that off to be the right height, doing the same thing I did to the buildings. Now to assemble the mechanism for this pull and pop. The easiest way to fold along this little bitty score line that's in this T is to use the edge of your ruler. So I just line up the edge of the ruler with that score line and then push the top part up against it. And once I get that going, I can reinforce that fold with my bone folder. Now this long T piece is going to be hidden inside so it doesn't really matter if it kind of gets warped a little bit when you bend it. And then on the other score line you're going to fold it back in the other direction. So we're going to have a Z shape. So we folded the big one with the wide piece towards us and then the other one away from us. And then I'm doing the same thing with the little stabilizer piece. I'm going to fold it in a Z. And as before, I inked both sides with that watercolor so it doesn't matter which way. And I'll just reinforce those folds with my bone folder. And you can see there's that Z shape to that little stabilizer piece and then we have a Z shape to our big tab. Now to thread this tab through, I'm going to flip my piece of paper over. Please ignore those pencil lines, they don't mean anything. I drew them out for a class and I didn't end up using this piece. So you're gonna thread the bottom through and then you're gonna thread the top through and then you're gonna thread that little tiny piece with the little things that stick out through the slot as well. The big Y piece will stay on the back. So you can see how that little T area is on the front. You just have to kind of shift it back and forth to get that through the slot but it will fit, it's plenty big enough. And then I'm just adjusting it to where that is nice and flat against the slot. And my tab is nice and straight. And then I'm going to take my stabilizer piece. And you can use a glue runner for this. I'm gonna use a little dot of liquid glue just because I am using a piece of watercolor paper that has texture to it and all this ink that we've put on it. So I think that the liquid glue will hold better. 
Then you're going to attach this little square piece right here, right above the slot, leaving a tiny, tiny little margin between them. Then you can fold it down, fold that other little square flap back, and put some adhesive on that as well, and then fold the tab back onto it. So that is going to dry there, and then I'm going to add my fence to my village. You can see I have not trimmed it off yet. And I'm actually going to use my bone folder or the ruler. I actually switched to the ruler just to hold down all those points because I put a little glue dot on the end of all those points. And then now I can flip it over and trim it off to where it's the same at the bottom as my black piece of cardstock was. So here is that piece that's going along the bottom. And it's just going to tuck right up underneath that tab that folds down. But before I glue that onto my card base, I want to cut that little decorative notch so that you can grab a hold of this tab really well. Now this little notch has a bar that goes along the bottom of the card and then those two little points that line up with the tab. I'm actually going to pull mine down a bit more so that that bar is off the edge of the card, just because I didn't want the notch cutting up into my fence. I wanted the top of that notch to be below the fence line. So I'm just pulling it down a little bit, but normally you would put that long bar right against the edge of the card. So I'll just run this through my die cut machine and I'll get this little notch cut out with a decorative stitching detail along the sides. You can see there how it is a little bit past like it normally would be, but that just means my notch is a little bit more shallow. And then I'm actually lining it up on my card base and I'm going to cut that same notch in the card base. So this will give you a notch on both sides so you can really grab a hold of that tab and pull it. So I've just lined it up with that piece. I'll hold it in place with some tape. And then since this is going to be glued to the card base, but it's going to be sandwiched between the card base and that border along the bottom, I'm just going to roughly hand cut a little notch out so that this piece of background paper is not in the way of the two notches I cut in the card base or that piece of paper across the front. So this will just get this excess watercolor paper out of the way. And I'm just kind of gently folding my tab up out of the way so I can cut this little notch. I don't, I don't want to bend it, so I'm being very careful not to do that. And then you can see there how that's going to keep that extra watercolor paper out of the way and open up the notch on both sides so you can grab a hold of that tab and pull it. Now I need to add this to my card base now that it's ready and you want to make sure that you only put adhesive in the corners and along the bottom. The sides of this panel need to give a little bit for the pivot point of that pull tab. So where I'm drawing my pencil lines across the top and a little bit down each side is exactly where I'm putting my double sided tape. So I've pulled that liner paper off the double-sided tape that I put in the places where I put the pencil marks. And then I'm going to stick this down to my card base. So now as you can see, that tab is really long and that just gives you a lot of flexibility on where you can put this tab on your card. And I just need to trim it off so it is the length I need for my card. Then I'm taking this decorative piece. I cut that from some rainforest cardstock, so it is a different color, but it's still very dark. And I just cut that kind of halfway between the two slots for the length. And I'll just tuck that up in there and layer this on top of my tab. And I get that nice stitching detail all the way around the three sides. And it also has that little arrow at the bottom. Now I can add my little city at the bottom, making sure I don't put any glue where that tab is going to be. I don't want to accidentally glue my tab down. I want to make sure that it moves freely. And I'm just lining this up across the bottom. And I'm just doing a little bit of repair with some watercolor ink to what little bit of that tear that I could still see. And now it's all fixed. Now to move on to my images, I'm trimming off that excess piece from the die cut of the bag where the strap was. 
I'll add a little dot of glue to the top of the bag and put that in my Mary Poppins Bear's hand. For the hat, I'm going to add the flowers that I colored and cut out. I have this cluster and then I will add the single one to the other side, make it very much look like Mary Poppins hat. And I am going to tuck it behind the umbrella so that it sort of looks like it is up in the umbrella. So I'll just add a little bit of glue to the bottom and pop that right onto her head. And I'm also going to add that single flower on the other side so that we have kind of that offset look. She does have flowers and cherries kind of all around her hat in the original Mary Poppins. And now for that little bow tie. This is why I decided to go with the blue bow tie. I just think it stands out a little bit better than the red. Then I'm adding her to the tab. Again, I'm using some liquid glue because I do have that kind of textured and very inky piece of cardstock and I wanna make sure that she does not come off. And I'm just lining up the bottom of that tab with sort of the bottom of the jacket. So the legs are going past the bottom of the tab and it hides it pretty nicely because of the size of this image. Now here's my little bears, my Jane and Michael. And what I decided was I liked how Mary Poppins really stood out against all that darkness. And so I decided not to add the other two little bears to my card. Now for the sentiment, I am using Harold's ABCs to spell out the words practically perfect. I thought about putting this on like a little piece of cardstock, but I like the idea of not covering up the sky. So I'm going to stamp it directly onto that inky sky. And what I have here is a piece of scrap paper that I already stamped it on to kind of get placement. I did this earlier when making a little practice layout, but I'm going to use this to place my letters. So I'm going to place that capital P in the word practically. And now I know that it is spaced far enough from the right side of the card that my whole word is going to fit. And I'm going to stamp each of these words individually. So then I'll just take my stamps and spell out the rest of the word practically. And of course, what I love the most about Lawn Fawn alphabets is that each letter is on a square or rectangular base. And all you have to do is line up the edges of each stamp with the one beside it and you get a perfectly spaced and straight word. So I am stamping in some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I think it shows up really well on this dark background. And this is just a practice stamp on a scrap piece to make sure it stamps right before I stamp it directly onto my background. So that looks good. And I'll just ink that up one more time. Oh, and I am making sure that I am going to clean off where I hit the door because that would touch my image and I really don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to stamp the word practically and give it some nice pressure, especially since it's on this kind of textured background. And then I'll do the same thing with the word perfect. I lined up the P and picked it up and now I am lining up the rest of the letters. And then I will ink that up with that same VersaFine black ink and stamp it directly onto the background. And I actually kind of like that this doesn't stand out and everything is dark and nighttime and then Mary Poppins really stands out on this card. And of course I need some glitter on my card so I'm adding some to her umbrella along the bottom and just a little bit on the top. I did not completely cover it kind of looks like rain on that umbrella and that little white arrow at the bottom of the tab was a little too stark so I just die cut that with some black cardstock and dropped it in so I like that Mary Poppins is outlined in white and she really stands out and then everything else kind of fades away and is dark in the background and I just think that's a really fun look then you pull that little tab and she goes up into the air just like we know Mary Poppins to do with her umbrella. And I just think that this turned out so cute. I'm so, so happy with it. And I just think it is so fun. So here is another look of that card up close. 
And I just think that that turned out really fun. I have some more ideas for some things to do with this pull and pop mechanism, and I can't wait to share them. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye. Thank you.